Hello, Tito Jeff here, but I'm not in Ormoc City, Leyte of the Philippines. I am in St. Louis, Missouri, and I thought I'd give an update. I haven't made a video in a while because I've been pretty busy. I uh, first was focused on finding a job after I got here, and uh, now I have a job. So I'm working for uh, Barnes Jewish Hospital here in St. Louis. It's a big hospital. They have about 33,000 employees. They they own more than one hospital here in town. I'm working in the housekeeping department. Not a great job. Not the most exciting job in the world, I guess you'd call that. After working as a chemist for 20-something years, I'm working as a housekeeper. And uh, my position is called industrial housekeeping. So you've got women that do the cleaning of the patient rooms and things like that. And I started out uh, hauling trash. Uh, they have chutes on 17th floor that... They drop trash down into big bins, and I would move those bins to the compactor and, and empty them, and some other assignments. So, I, And they've also given me some other what they call routes, where I go clean a, a cardiac di diagnostics lab, pull the trash, mop and sweep the floors, stuff like that. And now I've been assigned a permanent uh, position, uh, assignment, uh, you call it, on what they call the bridge. They're building a new building. And at the same time, they built a new bridge that goes from the parking plaza into the to the hospital. So I'm cleaning that. Uh, I guess because my boss liked me and she thought she could trust me on this assignment to get it done because the administration gives a lot of attention to that area. So I'm working night shift, uh, which is the same as Philippine time. Uh, they do offer really good benefits. And for a young person getting a job and, and Working there, it's it's a good place to get started in life. They have educational training that they can give you uh, for free, and some of it they'll pay for college. They'll pay for lots of things. Uh, it's a very physical job for me. It's very hard for me. I'm, I'll be 64 in November. I haven't worked like this in decades. I haven't done any physical labor in a long time. So I got hired. I had three weeks before I started, and uh, uh, so I started exercising a lot before I. Actually, by her, by, after my hire date, I, I, I started extra exercising a lot to get ready for this, and that helped me. Uh, job is okay. I don't mind doing it. you got to have a clean hospital, so it's it's a it might be considered a menial job, but it's an important job. You can't have a dirty hospital. You can't have trash piled up. You can't have dirty hallways and things like that. So it's got to be done. And uh, so my base pay, uh, I'll tell you, is $15 an hour. I get a dollar seventy an hour additional for night shift, and on the weekends I get an additional dollar thirty cents an hour. So on the weekends I'm making about eighteen bucks an hour. I've worked one overtime shift so far, and um, we're not supposed to get any before ninety days. So I got some within thirty days uh, because I guess my boss thought I was doing a good job. Um, so like I said, it's it's good for me. I'm getting stronger. I'm losing weight. It's really kind of a good workout. I'm on my feet seven hours a night at least. I have a 45-minute lunch break and a 15-minute break. And the rest of the time, I'm on my feet. I'm either walking or mopping or sweeping or doing something. I don't stand around. I'm on the move for seven hours. So I don't know if you can tell in my face, but I've lost weight. I bought some pants for the job. They're supposed to issue me some pants, but they didn't have any that fit. Um, I needed a 46, and they didn't have anything above a 42 or 44 or something like that. So I had to go buy some, and uh, I bought some that were a little tight, and now they're getting loose on me. So uh, I work with um, I work with some weird people. I got one guy that I work with. He's got a brain injury for 10 years ago. He got beat up by one of his buddies, uh, but uh, he's working. He could have stayed home. And uh, pull disability the rest of his life, but he's out there working, so I, I, I uh, respect him for that. Um, I take my lunch. I don't eat out much. Uh, I'll get to that later in my budget. So, like I said, they have good health benefits. Uh, I haven't used those yet, but uh, I'm eligible now. And if I have to go to the doctor, I can go to a hospital doctor. I know no copay, so the insurance pays the doctor. I don't have to pay a copay if I go to a hospital doctor associated with the hospital. And uh, the other benefits are, are, are good too. I do get some life insurance um, automatically. So uh, I couldn't make my wife, Marcel, my beneficiary, so I made my brother. 
the instructions to him what to do with the money if, if I was to pass away while I'm here. Um, we talked about that. So I asked my wife, would you want me to have my brother send my body back to the Philippines? And she said, yes. So we worked that out. It's kind of not on paper, but it's my brother would do that. So to get to work, I don't have a car. That's why I came to St. Louis. I'm staying at a friend's house. I thought he was going to charge me rent, but when I paid my first rent and I told him, he said, oh, I thought we were just going to stay there for no charge. Said, okay. So he's, he's a very nice fella, and he's going to let me stay here. So I can take a train and bus to work. I don't need a car. I can get around town on the train and bus pretty good to most everything that I need. Uh, and at work, I get a free bus pass. So now it doesn't cost me anything. It was costing me a, like a dollar a ride uh, on the bus, the train. Nobody was checking tickets, so anybody could ride the train for free for a while. I think they started that with COVID. Uh, the city decided they were going to let everybody ride the bus and the train for free during the, the peak of COVID. Now they're only charging a dollar for the bus ride. I think it was more than that pre-COVID. Um, but I also learned that they're going to put up some, some turnstiles at the train stations now. So you're going to have to have a ticket. Uh, on the train, there's a lot of smelly people. There's some crazy people talking to themselves. Um, but you also have people smoking marijuana on the train, just out in public. Uh, I sat and watched one guy sell some marijuana to a guy one night. He didn't care. It's uh, minor amounts of marijuana. You're not going to even get a ticket here in St. Louis. It's basically legal. Um, I do get some free rides on the bus as well. Uh, we got one driver. As soon as I get on, she's oh, go ahead. Don't worry about it. So I don't know what the deal is there. She's maybe just a rebel. So uh, all I do is work. I go to the grocery. I've got a grocery store 100 yards from, from my, my front door, maybe 150. Um, got a Dollar Tree there at Marshall's. I didn't have to go buy some shoes for this job. Bought those at Marshall's. I've been to a Walmart on the bus. That was kind of difficult uh, to get to the one that I wanted to. I looked online because I looked for these pants I had to buy and not every store had them available. That's the trouble with Walmart. They'll ever, you think they've got stuff and they don't have it. So I could check online and see if they had stuff in stock. Well, there's one Walmart in Walmart in St. Louis, one Walmart that had these pants in stock. So I had to go there. It was about a 15 minute hike from the bus stop to get there and then back to get home. So it took me about four hours just to go buy three pairs of pants. I looked at shoes while I was there, and I decided against buying the shoes. Well, they had some that were looking pretty good, but I couldn't find any that really fit good. Uh, so uh, my budget here has been, my plan was $100 a week. And I'm, I'm sticking with that so far. Haven't run into any real big problems. The only thing I did do here, I've, I've done some things that uh, I brought my, I've got a MacBook Pro computer, laptop computer. I brought it with me and I needed to get it repaired. So I got it done here for 120 bucks. Um, I thought I was getting it repaired in the Philippines, but the guy actually messed it up. He, he used some crazy glue and stuff on the inside. The repairman here told me he, he found it. Messed up my speakers inside. They were vibrating. So I got that fixed here. It works good. I had to get the Wi-Fi fixed. The Wi-Fi connection was was messed up. So I had to have a new Wi-Fi antenna. Then um, uh, that's about it. I haven't really spent a lot of money here, except I had to get a phone number here uh, with T-Mobile. That's, that's 40 bucks a month for, for phone service. 40 bucks a month. I spend about forty or fifty dollars a week at the grocery store, uh, so that's ninety bucks. Yeah, and maybe I eat out a couple of times a week. Well, that's hard to do, ten dollars a week. But you got Burger King here; they got a five dollar meal deal, a couple of things like that. So that's all I get. And for about a month, I didn't eat out at all. I didn't go out to eat anywhere, but it's gone up so much here. Uh, for instance, one of my favorite. Little meals, little treats was McDonald's, biscuits and gravy with extra gravy, a side of sausage, a hash brown, and two bottles of milk. 
about two and a half years ago in the States before I came to the Philippines, that was only about eight fifty. It's seventeen dollars now for that little meal. And uh, it's crazy here. I, the, some of the the eggs at the grocery store. I've been buying eggs, eighteen count, you know, a dozen and a half eggs for three dollars and ninety three cents, which I thought was high. That was what it was one week. Came back the next week, it's five dollars and forty cents. Went up twenty five percent in one week. They have some bird flu or something like that. A bunch of chickens died, and you know, along with the regular inflation and stuff like that. So. It's crazy. Uh, beef. I looked at uh, just a chuck roast. It was it's like eight dollars a pound for chuck roast. It's crazy. So um, I don't eat much fancy stuff. I, I get some deals on on meat, like pork chops. I find some for two twenty nine a pound. So I, I stock up brats. I got them for a dollar seventy nine a pound. I buy a big bag of frozen chicken breasts, like five pounds for six eighty-seven or something like that, maybe three pounds. So you can get some deals like that, and you can I can keep my budget under control. And I buy a sack of potatoes, so I'm eating meat and potatoes every night at work. Same thing over and over again. It's either chicken, pork, or a sausage, plus a baked potato, which I bake in the microwave, and uh, with butter and sour cream and some bacon bits. It's a good meal. It's tasty. It's nutritious, but a little boring. And then uh, for my break time, I have a sandwich, usually a peanut butter and jelly or a bologna sandwich. I was enjoying eating some bologna. I haven't had any bologna in two and a half years. So a fried bologna, fried bologna egg sandwich, add a little cheese. Uh, when I first got here, I bought some uh, liver cheese, Bra uh, Braunschweiger, if you ever eat that stuff. So I got it on special, like two, two rolls for the price of one. That was a good deal. So I stocked up on that. But I haven't had that deal in a while. Uh, I missed breakfast sausage in the Philippines. Old folks. Purnell's Old Folks Country Sausage. Because it's good. That's from the commercial. And uh, so I'm getting, I'm getting some deals on the hot flavored um, sausage. For like two two fifty a roll. Which is a pretty good deal. Occasionally I get some Jack's Frozen Pizzas. Uh, that's my big treat on my days off. Pop one in the oven, add some extra cheese to it, and it's pretty good. Uh, ordering pizza here is expensive, um, so I don't do that. And I could. I mean, I've got a job, I've got a paycheck. If I'm living here with my wife, Marcel, we'll do that kind of thing. I've got a budget plan for when we come here, and we'll have money to do that. But my goal here now is to save as much money as I can to prepare us for moving back to the United States next year to help fund that, that relocation so I don't have to dip into my savings so much. And my goal when I first came here was to be about $7,000 in savings, and, and I'm going to meet that or exceed it, I think. So maybe about 8000 8500 8, something like that. So we'll see, you know, unless something goes wrong and I have to go to the doctor or some kind of unexpected expense or something like that. You never know. But I think I'm going to meet those goals, and um, I'm losing weight. I'm getting strong. I feel kind of good. I'm working with guys half my age, and I keep up with them. Uh, I do a better job than they do. you got some kids that just want to run around and do some work fast, and they know that if they get done early, they can just kind of wander around the hospital, and the boss ain't going to check up on them. So it's, uh, But I stay, I stay on my job, and, um, oh, man, I, I worked one night. We call it doodle bugging. <laughs> you got a stick with a scrub pad on the end of it. And we got a brand new tile floor. And I had to doodle bug some steps because the, the new tile had kind of a haze on it. So we had to get that off. I did that for about four hours. I thought my arms were going to fall off. and uh, But I'm doing okay. I'm hanging in there. Getting stronger. Feeling good. I've learned to stretch. All you guys my age out there, if you're having aches and pains... Get online to HT Physio, HT Physio. It's a YouTube channel. It's a British guy. He's a physical therapist, and he specializes in helping old folks. Uh, he's written a book. He seems to really know what he's doing. And I uh, saw, found some stretches, stretching exercises on there. And I do those a lot now. And uh, I do them at work. If my back starts hurting, I sit down on a bench, 
stretch my, my hips and my back in a little bit, and I feel much better, and I can go on. So stretching is something that's going to be a big part of my life from now on. i got to stretch, 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 and do some exercises. Because like I said, I'm walking a lot all night, and sometimes my muscles, I think, get tight, especially in my hips and in my lower back, and uh, stretching makes it feel better. I miss my wife, Maricel. I miss my little boy, JJ, Jeffrey Jr., I get to see them two or three times a day on video chat, but it's not the same thing. You know. So I'm really missing them, especially my little buddy, JJ. Uh, I'm watching him grow up a little bit on video chat. Uh, I have a plan for him. I was walking to church one day. And I walked past a hardware store, uh, an old-fashioned hardware store, uh, downtown Overland, Missouri, where I'm staying. And they had a radio flyer tricycle in the window. And I was looking at that. That's what I need to get for JJ. Because I had one when I was a kid. And so I looked into it. I can get one about with 12 inch. The front wheel is 12 inches. And it's probably a little big for him. But he'll grow into it later on. So I think I'm going to get one of those. It costs about $60 online. Maybe $70. And uh, the weight is about 16 pounds. And I can. it comes in parts. It comes in a box. So I just take the parts, put them in my big suitcase, and uh, bring them home uh, to the Philippines. And JJ will have a nice tricycle. He's going to like that. He'll be excited. So that's my big plan. And I've got some pasta labong I've already bought for my family in the Philippines. Not much. Some some little stuff like um, bottle openers with, that are a keychain um, and a P-38. I don't know if, you're in, if anybody in there in the military knows what a P-38 is. It's a can opener you carry on your keychain. I have one I've had for 25 years and uh, maybe longer. And my family in the Philippines see me use it. They go, oh, that's cool. So I bought a box of those to take back with me, about 16 of them. And I got some fans, uh, Fi-Fi fans for the, for the ladies back in the Philippines and I'm going to buy a couple of dolls for some little nieces that I have and some, some other stuff for children and some uh, maybe take back some M&Ms and candy and stuff like that. So I'll spend less than 100 bucks on Paso Limon, which is expected in the Philippines. When you go on a trip and you come home, you're supposed to bring home some Paso Limon. So we got to do that. I'm sleeping good. i got a room in the basement of a house. Uh, I've got one little window, and I blocked that out with some... Um, cardboard, a cardboard box that's broken down, fits right in there, blocks the light, so I sleep good during the day. Uh, I've gotten used to the night shift schedule. I stay up on my days off and uh, talk to my wife and child. And I haven't been to work church much since I've been working because it's kind of hard. Uh, bus schedules and, and not just not feeling good when I get off from work and things like that. So I'm... Um, I'm making it here. A lot of nice people here in St. Louis. I lived here in 2008, and I forgot really how nice people can be here. It's a big city, but it's got a small town feel to it. When I get off the bus, uh, other people get off, they thank the driver. Thank you, driver, and for the train. Uh, people are polite here, mostly. Um, you do have crime here. It's, it's one of the murder, I think, a murder capital of the United States right now. But that's in certain neighborhoods, and that's because teenagers run around with guns. They don't fight with their fists anymore. They carry a gun. And they're just going out shooting each other. Uh, I was talked to an old black dude on the bus one day, and he was he was complaining about this. When I was a boy, we we had some problems. I mean, we, we duked it out. We didn't carry a gun. All these little kids carrying guns now. Said, you got to have a gun. So, you know. That's life here in St. Louis. It really is. And some of the younger people that I work with have, have talked about it, too. And uh, so you see some people doing drugs. Uh, one guy late at night in the parking lot next to the train station was obviously high on something, meth or whatever. He was real sweaty. He was taking his clothes off and yelling and talking and real fast and walking around and uh, you know just avoided that guy altogether. Some other young young black guys started talking to him, and they almost got into it. Uh, and the guy was trying to be nice to him. So it's it's all right. Um, St. Louis, 
Um, I could bring Mauricio Hill here, I think. There are lots of Filipinas. I've seen some at work. I've talked to two or three, but only briefly, I, in passing. I asked them, Filipinas, come on? And they said, oh, yeah, Filipinas, knuckle. So they, they get, some of them get excited. Some of them, like, eh, okay. Um, but uh, I, there are lots of nurses here and then two ladies in the housekeeping department uh, on a different shift than I am. So um, I don't know what else to tell you guys, but it's it's going okay. Uh, I look forward to going back. I think I'm going to head back around approximately now. I don't, have a, I don't have a ticket yet. The 15th or 17th of December, which uh, will get me home in time for Christmas to relax a little bit. And... Uh, I look forward to that. So I got less than 100 days to go. And I'll try to make some more videos and uh, let you know what's going on around here um, in, in St. Louis. I'll talk to you later. Tito Jeff, St. Louis, Missouri. Bye-bye.